Hi, welcome to episode 104 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. I'm Laura, also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Stash Buckler Adventures in Yarn. And we have a Ravelry group called The Corner of Knit and Tea. If you haven't come over and joined us, please do. Hi, how are you? It is Sunday, September 18th, and it has been a lovely week and weekend here. Um, I guess I should say it has been an okay week. It has been very, very rainy, um, but the weekend has been beautiful. Temperatures in the 70s, breezy, sunny, lovely. I took a long walk outside yesterday, um, and Wes has been doing his training runs. He ran 20 miles yesterday because the marathon is about a month away now. Um, and today he went to go play disc golf with friends because he's going to be playing in a disc golf tournament next weekend. So, yeah, we've been keeping active and all sorts of things going on. The week at work um, was not super busy, although we're coming up on board meetings and things this week. So it will be quite busy this week. Um, and I have gotten lots and lots of crafty time in. I really wasn't sure I was going to make some of my self-imposed goals, um, but I did. So I am super happy. I have some things to show you, um, both knitting and spinning, and then I will announce the wi winner of the um, Filament Issue 1 giveaway. So let's jump in. Today's tea is Guava Cadabra by David's Tea. This is one that I discovered a while ago. It has um, mango, hibiscus, and guava, as well as apple, elderberries, um, mango, beetroot, and rose hips. So it is an herbal tea, decaf, um, and it is a little bit, a uh, little bit tropical, um, and I really enjoy that. And I am drinking that today in my. Jenny the Potter Pirate Crab Mug. This was from um, the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival several years ago. It was not actually the one that I went to. This was a lovely gift from a lovely friend um, because I had launched the Stash Buckler and so she wanted me to have a pirate crab. Um, but yes, it's lovely. So Guava Cadabra, a little bit of tropical summer in my um, Maryland mug. And that is delicious. I have... Um, I enjoy it hot. The other thing I do with it is sometimes I mix it with a little bit of green tea and prepare it iced, um, and that is delicious as well, particularly over the summer. So yum. I will put links to that in the show notes if you are interested. So let's talk about the stuff. I don't have a ton of stuff to show you as I've talked about, um, but let's let's get into it. I did manage to finish two small things this week. Um, I have been so good and I talked to you about how I was staying monogamous on my knitting and this week I didn't stay monogamous on my knitting. Um, I needed something little to sort of break it up um, and so I wanted to knit a couple washcloths for um, the new nephew. Um, I, I can't remember if I told the story on here or not. The last time I was there um, visiting my niece Roxy who is almost three, um, we she asked if I could do bath time with her. And so I went in and my sister pulled out this um, like wicker basket of washcloths and handed it to Roxy and said, pick one. And um, in there were the washcloths that I had knit when she was a baby. Um, and she picked that one and she said, you knit this. Um, and it was really, really sweet. And I, um, the ones that I knit for her were hot, hot, hot pink, like, like that neon pink. Um, so I decided maybe I'd knit a few more in um, slightly less pink colors um, for the nephew. Not that I'm like a huge gender um, color believer, but I just thought I would do um, something a little different. So I knit these two washcloths. The pattern is Leafy Washcloth by Megan Goodacre. Um, it is a freebie pattern. It has a variety of um, permutations and combinations. You can knit it garter, you can knit it stockinette with a garter border, etc. Um, these are super quick. I do them in an hour, maybe an hour and 15. I mean, I can easily do one in an evening and that's what I did. I would spin a little bit, I would knit a little bit. Um, and so I have two of these and actually I have a third. Um, it is still wet. I did it yesterday. Um, so just a few little washcloths um, to, to add to um, the package of things that I'll be sending my sister. Um, for the new baby, um, but I wanted her to have some that weren't 
hot pink, um, just in case uh, her her uh, son doesn't care for hot pink. I'm sure he'll have plenty of pink with a little older sister. Um, but yeah, so a couple washcloths done, just a little bit of stash out. Um, and the funny thing is that I have a friend, a local friend, who um, a while ago when I needed to, when I was going to knit some washcloths for um, charity, I believe I was knitting them for... Um, Pink Haired Girl and I Am Rachel Swims, their charity. Um, and when I was knitting a bunch of washcloths wash cloths, and talking about how I needed to go buy some um, sugar and cream cotton, she said, oh, no, 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 you don't. I have plenty. And she brought me this huge bag and then she refused to take it back. And she was like, you'll use it before I will. So yes, I dug into her bag and um, used some more of the cotton. So, and I, I got a good chunk of the way through the blue. I think the blue, I think each skein of sugar and cream will do um, about three washcloths. So I did two of the blue and then I just had a little bit left of this natural and I liked it. So those are going to my nephew. That is the only thing I've finished this week. Um, but I've made great progress on my sweater. So um, this is my Rhinebeck sweater. Um, it is Ardara by Carol Feller and I'm using Cascade 220 um, Heathers in a green colorway called Irlande. And um, last week when I showed you, I was about 14, 14 and a half inches in and um, had finished the waist shaping and um, was continuing to where I was going to start the bust shaping. And I said I needed to knit, I think last week I said 21 inches. That actually was the smallest size. Um, I needed to knit to 22 and a quarter for my size. And so I kept measuring along the way and um, decided roughly where in the pattern I needed to be. Um, and then I measured and I'm actually at 23 inches. So I'm a little bit beyond where I need to be, but here is what I have so far. So I'll just cover me up for a second. So remember, this is going to be um, like a tunic length sort of waistcoat. So this length right here is um, the bottom through my armpits. Um, so it is a long, but um, it is kind of supposed to be like a coat kind of thing. Um, and I am now at the point where I am going to divide for the sleeves. So um, when I am done podcasting, I'm going to go out and um, start working. This is where you divide for the front and backs. Um, and the interesting part about the sleeves is the sleeves for this are just um, made by casting on additional stitches um, at the side. So I um, anticipate that this, or hope that this will go fast. Um, my, my goal would be to basically be um, done with the sleeves and shoulders and all of that by next week so that the final week in September by next weekend when I podcast so that the final week in September can be devoted to the shawl collar and the button bands and um just a little bit of trim around the sleeves remember this is a short sleeve um just like a cap sleeve so I think the color is pretty true here and you can see the beautiful, beautiful cables. I am super pleased with my progress on this one. Um, I am just finishing, I guess my third and a half ball. Um, so that would put me at about 770 yards in this sweater already. Um, and I have one more um, wound up and I'll probably wind up a second one this afternoon. Um, I would guess two to three more balls to finish the project. Um, so that will be a nice sized sweater in a nice sized chunk out of the stash. Um, and I am super pleased. So Rhinebeck, here we come. Um, and I think I'm almost on schedule to finish by the end of the month, which would be lovely because I have a ton of other things I want to do. So yes, my Rhinebeck sweater, Ardara by Carol Feller, Cascade 220 in the Irlande colorway. Hopefully I will have a more or less finished body piece to show you next week um, with just the trimming to go. Um, but I am super pleased with my progress on this one. So I did actually um, this week, so usually what happens is sometime in August or September, the weather turns slightly and all of a sudden I want to knit everything. That was this week. <laughs> Earlier this week, um, a friend of mine on Twitter posted a shawl that she was wearing um, that she had actually designed. And I was like, oh my God, I need that, I need that, I need that. And I was online looking for yarn. And then I finally talked myself down from the ledge because I thought, okay, 
Um, I'm going to Rhinebeck. I don't need to buy yarn for this shawl this week, but it is a garter stitch shawl. It looks super cozy. Um, and as it turns out, I think I might spin for it. And I tossed the stash and found some amazing things to spin. I didn't think I had enough um, of any one thing for enough yardage. Um, but as it turns out, I have two sets of two bumps. Um, so it's a pound of fiber, so it should be more than enough. Um, and I am so excited about it. So that will be coming up. Spinzilla is coming up. I'm thinking I might spin that for Spinzilla. Um, and I want to knit all the socks in October, Socktober socks. Um, and I am looking at a couple new sweaters and I just want to knit everything, 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 everything. And I have to say it's not frustrating because I am really enjoying the sweater that I'm knitting, but um, it's a little frustrating that I can't cast on everything I want to knit right now um, because I want to get my Rhinebeck sweater done. So I'm trying to be really good. The washcloths were a little bit of an aberration, but um, I was going to knit them anyway, probably in October or November. Um, and so I might try and um, assuage my wanting to knit everything um, with casting on a few more small things like I need to do um, another winter hat for Roxy you know things that I can get done more or less in one sitting that won't distract me too much from um, my sweater until the sweater is done and then I'm giving myself permission to cast on everything so that's the knitting let's get to the spinning Last week I showed you a braid that I was halfway through and I told you I was spinning it up um, for a friend who was doing some work for me. Um, and I finished it this week and it is um, beautiful. It was um, pinks and reds and a hint of an icy blue and um, it was targy so it's super squishy and puffy. And um, like I said, this one is going to a friend of mine, so it is not going in the shop, um, but I am just super pleased with the way it came out. It is so pretty and squishy. Um, so I need to take pictures and get this off to her. Um, and then I told you I'm spinning a second skein for her. Um, and I am partway through that. That was the uh, Southern Cross Fiber um, South African Superfine Merino, which as I said was one of my favorite blends to spin. And actually the fiber that I found in my stash for that shawl for me that I'm talking about spinning for, it's all South African Superfine. I'm so excited. Anyway, I am halfway through this one, so I will be working to finish this one up. This is the colorway Sea Fog. It is kind of a lavender gray. It is spinning up beautifully, and um, these will be the two skeins that I send to her. Which brings me to what else I'm going to spin this week, because this one should be done in the next couple days. Um, and I pulled out, um, I have a couple braids that I wanted to get to by the end of September, and September has flown by, um, and mostly I have spun for prizes and um, for trade, so I need to spin something for the shop, right? This is um, the June to September Crazy Twisted and Arbitrary uh, Spin Along Fiber. It is Fat Cat Knits. It is her Panda Fiber, which is 72% Superwash Merino, 14% Bamboo, 14% Trilobal Nylon, and the Trilobal Nylon... The Trilobal Nylon is sparkly, so this will have a little bit of subtle sparkle to it. And this is called Rapture, and it is pinks and reds and browns and um, a little bit like what I just spun, except it doesn't have like the, the blue in it. Um, and I think this is going to spin up lovely. Um, if you are a spinner and don't know what I'm talking about, um, there is a group on Ravelry called the Crazy Twisted and Arbitrary Group. And um, four times a year, they're in three month blocks, they do spin alongs where um, they contact an independent dyer and um, the independent dyer comes up with a theme. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think this one was Impressionist Paintings. Um, and everybody who is a member of the group is welcome to post photos in a thread and we vote on those photos and the top anywhere between about five and eight photos are given to the dyer as inspiration for colorways. Um, and then the dyer comes up with as many or as few colorways as uh, she or he wants. Um, most often it's usually two colorways. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. 
Um, and then you have the opportunity to buy those colorways. Um, unless it's a super famous dyer like Southern Cross Fiber um, or Hello Yarn, um, your opportunity to buy those colorways um, is usually in unlimited quantities. So you can purchase what you want. They usually do it on a couple different bases. I know this one was offered on the Panda base and then also on um, Rambo, Rambolet. And then you can purchase and um, spin along in those months. So like I said, this one was June through September 2016. Um, they're actually working on the October through... October through December. Yeah. <laughs> um, October through December colorway now. They've already had the um, photo challenge post, um, but the dyer is Fiber Artemis. Um, and she will be posting probably in the next week or two um, or usually right around October 1st, um, what, uh, what colorways she's come up with. And her theme was birds. So, um, anyway, so that's a little bit of a longer story about why I want, to, but I want to spin this before the end of September because you can also spin, um, and post your finished spin and sometimes there are prizes. So I thought it would be a good idea to get this one, um, on the wheel and going. So that is what I'm going to spin this week with these two. You'll, um, if you keep an eye on my Instagram, um, you'll be able to see progress photos. And this one, the Rapture, will be going into the shop. So um, if it's something that you think you might like, definitely um, keep an eye out for it. That's sort of the end of most of what I want to talk about. The last thing that I want to do is do the um, drawing for the winner of the um, filament issue number one. Um, this is uh, produced by my friend Anne and her friend Kathleen. Um, and they generously offered a print copy, um, which also has a coupon code in the back for a Ravelry copy um, of their first issue, which was filament number one, fall 2016. Um, I opened a thread in my Ravelry group and it was open for um, just under two weeks um, and we had 23 entries. So I ran uh, the random number generator uh, 2 through 24 since the first post was mine and the winning post was number 15, Knit Tea Garden, which sounds like perfect for me. It's Knit, K-N-I-T, T, T-E-A, Garden. So um, we have a lot in common. Um, Nitty Garden Linda. Um, so please contact me. You can PM me on Ravelry. Please send me your um, full name and your address and I will pass that along to Anne and Kathleen and they will get you that copy. So I suppose that's all I have for you today. I keep wanting to wind yarn and show you what I want to knit and craft next, but I really, really, really need to keep going on my sweater. So I am not going to do that just yet. Um, maybe next week I'll do that because if I finish most of the body and I'm working on the collar and um, next weekend will be the last podcast before October actually starts. So maybe I will go ahead and um, wind up some stuff and get ready for October. So I hope that you have had a wonderful week. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. I know this one was a little short. Um, hopefully in the future, in the next couple weeks, I will start getting more projects on the needles and have a little bit more to show you. Um, but until then, I hope you have a wonderful crafty time and I'll say until I see you again, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye.